we are always searching for the tools to see what is happening inside our cluster. Uh, for example, the Lens app that we used to download to see what is happening inside the clusters, what all stuff is there, a different set of Kubernetes dashboards. So in this video, I'll be discussing a similar kind of experience with you where we'll be exploring Headlamp as the Kubernetes dashboard or a desktop application, how to use that, some of its features, its extensibility using plugins and how we can extend it. So this video is going to be all about Headlamp. Again, first things first, thanks to Commodore Sysdic, Instruct and Slim AI, make sure to check them out. They sponsor my time and I am able to produce such type of content for you. Now let's move to Headlamp. So Headlamp is the user-friendly Kubernetes UI that is focused on extensibility. And we'll talk more about this extensibility features, which is there. Uh, obviously out of the box, it will be a fully powered Kubernetes UI. And then with its powerful plugin systems, people can shape the headlamp according to their use cases, their environments and products. Um, so the three key things that Headlamp Docs is adaptable UI and branding. So you can actually customize the branding, extend the views, uh, customize all that stuff using the Headlamp plugins. The control is all RBAC based. So if you want to completely remove the edit access, only have the view access, it is doable. So everything is RBAC based. And it is for web and desktop. So there is a Headlamp desktop version as well that you can run on your laptop locally with your kubeconfig files and then there is a web version that can be installed inside the cluster and you can you know expose it as a node port service or a load balancer or even port forwarded to view what all is happening for your kubernetes cluster now i have not installed headlamp so because i wanted to take you through the entire journey of installing it and experience it so we'll do it together um, so first, let's go to the documentation. We'll see, yeah, this is about headlamp. Uh, let's go to the overview. It says installation. Uh, so yeah, we have to create a service account, have the cluster admin role assigned to that service account, create the token. Uh, okay, so let's do this first. And you can also use OpenID Connect that is mentioned in the in-cluster documentation, which we will see. Okay, so let's do that first. So I already have a Kubernetes cluster, kubectl get nodes. And we'll start with creation of service account. Service account is created. Let's create the cluster role binding. That is created. Now, since we are on Kubernetes 1.24 plus, uh, so we can directly get the token. So that should be the token with which we log in. And let's now do the installation. Now, before proceeding further, there are two things that I want to install. One is the ingress controller, which in this case will be Nginx. Um, and one is the cert manager. So this particular command is installing Nginx ingress controller onto the cluster. And next we'll be installing cert manager. Let's copy the cert manager install and get that created as well. So that our cluster is fully equipped to have the TLS certificates as well for the resources that we create. Okay, so let's move back to the installation. Uh, so for in-cluster deployment, uh, you have this YAML file first that has to be deployed. So let's deploy the main Kubernetes headlamp components. So after the deployment, next step is exposing headlamp with an ingress server. So I actually opened it and saw that it is of previous extensions v1 beta 1 and there is no certificate and all those things mentioned. Uh, so I've already prepared that file and this is the file where you have the cluster issuer. It is as ingress class with nginx. Then you have certificate. So we are generating the certificate with common name and DNS name. By the way, there is a full fledged video of HTTPS, how it works and how all these works. Uh, with the certificate authority and let's encrypt so make sure to check that out https kubernetes if you don't understand any of the pointers over here uh, the next is the ingress so networking gates iov1 ingress uh, we have given the annotations cube system namespace and we will name it as 
headlamp ingress. And we have given uh, the host and the host whatever and wherever it is given it is basically the load balancer DNS name for Nginx ingress controller. So when we installed Nginx ingress controller it was installed as a load balancer and this is the DNS name of that particular load balancer that we are using over here. And uh, the secret over here is headlamp because that is where what we defined in the secret name in the certificate section. So now that we have the file prepared, uh, let's deploy that kubectl apply hyphen f ingress. It will have cluster issuer certificate and ingress which is created. So let's do kubectl get certificates cube system. And you can see it is already ready. Uh, so kubectl get ingress. Let's hit that. And we have our headlamp up and running. Now there were steps that we did before which were when you went to the overview section of the installation. So you can see the authentication and login how to do that. So we created all this service account and token. So we'll just generate the token again because we have cleared the screen. So we'll create the token again and we'll use this token to log in to the instance. So authenticate and boom, this is headlamp and we have successfully uh, installed headlamp which is gold. Um, let's go through it. So it is showing all the cluster components like namespaces, nodes, CRDs, config maps, uh, HPAs, resource quotas, pod disruption budgets, priority classes. It gives you a decent view of uh, the CPU memory pods, the glance, and then the events, the Kubernetes events, kubectl and get events, which is fine. Um, let's go to namespaces. Yes, we have a few namespaces on our active. We can actually click on a namespace and see if we have what all stuff we have. So we, we can see the labels, annotations, all the pods associated in that namespace. And obviously we can access the pods from here as well. And we can filter out by different namespaces. We can edit the namespace here itself and it opens up an editor that can just be used. Uh, coming next to the nodes, uh, it is a three node Kubernetes cluster. For all is ready, the memory, CPU and it is showing the age of the nodes as well. Uh, very often we keep deploying the custom resource definition, the, the controllers which internally installs the CRDs and here is all the CRDs that we can view, especially with the certificates one that we have just used. Config maps, um, what all config maps have been generated. HPAs, we don't have any resource quotas, we don't have any, and I don't think we have the PDP, PDV as well. Uh, there are some priority classes with respect to the system critical and the node critical ones. Um, so good, that's a nice good overview of the cluster that is presented within the headlamp. Uh, next comes the workloads. So it tells you about the different set of Kubernetes objects which are there like the daemon set deployment, jobs, cron jobs, replica set, stateful sets at a glance. And uh, then you can see what all stuff is already there. You can filter it up by the namespace. And let's say if we go to one of the workloads, for example, deployment, and we want to go into the headlamp deployment. So we can actually see the name, namespace, creation timestamps, replicas, conditioning, uh, any conditions that are there. And then uh, as part of this deployment, what are the thoughts associated with it and the probes arguments as well. So I think it, that's a good overview. Uh, now let's go from here to the pods. It takes you to the pods and it gives you the pod information, uh, which are namespace again controlled by replica set on which node this particular pod is running the IPs and any volume that is getting mounted, etc., uh, which is good. There are a few icons over here that I'm very interested in. I think this will obviously give me the logs. Yes, it is giving me logs and I can filter it out based on, like I can get the timestamp, I can follow the logs, I can unfollow the logs and just get uh, the 101, 100 uh, lines and then I can even get up to two, 1500 lines 
and we can search in between and we can download the logs as well which is fancy and if it's a multi-container pod both the containers all the containers will show up in the container section of this particular pod uh, we can go full screen as well nice and then i think we can get a terminal shell inside to the pod as well so we can go inside the pod as well and we we are good over here so i think that's pretty cool pretty neat storage yes um, we already have a volume which is there it shows that um, if any persistent volume and persistent volume claims are there it will show that and with respect to networks it will show the services uh, endpoints and ingresses so let's say that we go to the headlamp service it will go to the headlamp service show the ports the endpoints that it is mapped to and all those things security so all the service accounts which are there the roles roles finding and the secrets that are present should be there and i think all of these can be customized based on the token that we generated so we created a cluster admin um, and that it's token that token we are using to access headlamp so if we uh, create a rbac or a service account with a limited rbac of v only resources then it will only be there to view the resources and all these edits won't work also, you can create the resources um, in the editor. So let's try that if that works. And let's try to apply. Applying Nginx. Okay, it is applying and it is applied. So if I go to workloads, pods, I should see an Nginx pod container creating and running. That's very good. That's very neat. Very real time. That's pretty much it for headlamp. But wait, there were a few more things, right? We do have a few more things which is the desktop applications so not every time you need the headlamp to be installed within the cluster you can actually use it as a desktop app uh, if you are being used to use a desktop application to view manage your uh, clusters i think that is pretty cool now i already have headlamp installed uh, the brew so i've done the brew install so let's open headlamp and it is getting auth info and boom so this is my desktop application and it already picks up my cube config file from the root dot cube folder so whatever is there in the cube config file it will get list of all the clusters and you'll be able to uh, choose between the cluster that you want to view so i think that's pretty fancy uh, i think an option in the ui uh, where a user can have different contexts would be superb to have in the desktop applications and also in the UI if a user can have something like add another cluster and then people can switch between the clusters or add a cube config file and switch between cube config file it would be very fancy there was one more thing that I talked about which was the extensibility using the plugins so going back to the documentation if you go and see there is something which is called plugins so plugins is one of the key features of uh, headlamp that allows you to change how and what information is displayed uh, so you can customize the whole ui that is there so what i have done is let's go to the headlamp repository and let's go to plugins and if you see there are many example plugins over here that you can customize like you can change the logo you can have the pod counter and change its css and stuff like that so i have done change logo and pod counter these two plugins which is already there so we'll go to like for example change logo and if you see in the source and i have changed these icons uh, and there are two things uh, one is the docker file for this what it is doing is it is copying um, to headlamp plugins and then it is using the headlamp plugin so if i again go back here you can see that headlamp plugin which is this is needed for building the headlamp plugins that is why we are using this so coming back and it's a multi-stage build and then we copy from the builder to the plugins directory now how to use this is something which is in the values yaml so this is the values.yaml file and we are using init container over here uh, and also we are trying to create persistent volume claim and mount that inside 
The image was created using the GitHub workflow. So it's a simple Docker build and push. So it is building it, checking out the repository, building it and pushing it to the repository using my Docker, Docker Hub username, password, which are as secrets in GitHub actions. Uh, so this looks fine. So now what we have to do is, uh, since I have already prepared the values and all that file, uh, and we'll be using Helm install this time uh, for installing and updating the Helm chart to get the values from the plugin systems. So I will be removing the previous installation and then installing via Helm. So the removal is pretty simple. I'll just remove the installation that we did from the end cluster one. So cube CTL delete hyphen F and then we'll do the Helm repo add. And now we'll do the Helm install with the values file. So the chart is deployed and we can actually check uh, on our desktop application. Um, so it says it is pending because uh, it must be using some PVC and you can see that my headlamp uh, PVC is pending and right now as we were scrolling it just got bound uh, seven seconds ago if we go back uh, we go to workloads pods we can see that the init container is being initialized so the init container is being initialized and this the couple of things that that will be changed so pod initializing running so everything is running uh, we can go back and do the steps as mentioned Export the pod name, export container name, create the token, put the port forward, copy the token. Let's go to localhost 8080. You can already see that the logo has been changed. That's how the logo is changed. You can also see a pod counter that is added over here. So if we go back to the repository, we can see we did two things. One is the pod counter and one is the change logo. So we were able to successfully change the logo and the pod counter. So this is how the plugins are effective and they give you the power to extend and edit the UI as per your use case and scenarios, you know, use your logos and stuff like that. And these will be separate from uh, the official headlamp repository because these plugins can live in your own repositories. So that's, that's also a neat part that you can do all the customizations and just maintain your plugin code and rest of the headlamp code you can use as it is and you don't have to maintain the fork of that. So that's pretty much it uh, about Headlamp and how you can use it as another Kubernetes UI or a desktop application if you are looking for any of the alternatives. Uh, do let me know in the comment section what tool you are using to visualize your clusters. Uh, I know many people must be using canines. Let me know if anything that you are using. And and once again, thanks to Commodore, Sysdick, Instruct, and Slimea. Do check them in the comments. And make sure to like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel, all the standard stuff. But yeah, I hope you learned something with respect to Kubernetes UI, headlamp, how it works and how you can uh, change the plugins. Uh, by the way, do let me know if you have created any additional plugin. We'd love to try that. And also what you think, how you can extend it. Um, I would be more interested if, you know, there is an option to have, again, like I said before, uh, to have multiple clusters imported at the same time or just by provide, providing separate cube config file because in the desktop it takes the home of the root cube dot cube folder config but if we can you know have additional set of configurations or additional set of clusters and then we have different contexts that we can just you know select through and it appears that would also be very uh, very cool and handy feature so yeah that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching and see you on another video